heating controls. Okay. Buenos dias. Safe practice first. Niñas, abuelo, abuela. Tio, tia, mama, papa. Girls. Grandparents, aunts and uncle, daddy and mommy, welcome. So this is our second lesson in standard one and we are looking at the painting of the scarlet ibis. Remember in our last lesson, we painted our scarlet ibis. So now we are going to look at a little more detail and a little more technique, all right? Remember in our last lesson, we looked at making the scarlet ibis with, firstly, we started with the number two and then we did the head. But remember, I taught you now, now we need to do it in the correct proportion. Remember, we estimated the head using our fingers and we counted how many heads make the bill. Then we estimated how many of the heads would make the neck and the oval body, how many of the head would make the oval body. All right, today now we are going to look at it as a three dimensional shape. So when you first did it, it was what you would call a flat shape. So I also did it, right? Let me see if I can get it on the board here for you, right? So it's flat. We want to make this look dimensional. It we want to make it have body. We want to give it life. It's not just a drawing. So most things have dimension length width and height it has it has volume all right so you would eventually learn about the rectangular prism also known as the cube oil the sphere the cube the cone the cylinder triangular prism the pyramid how does that apply to our scarlet ibis well our scarlet ibis are really made up of these three dimensional out of um materials right mm -hmm. solids they are made out of solids mm -hmm. yes it is yes it does if you look carefully you will see these solids in your scarlet ibis so you have a sphere you have a cone you have an ellipsoid and cylinders mm -hmm. so i also sculpted it from plasticine right now i want you to look at it carefully now, the way how the light falls on it, it is not flat red. You will see the light fall on it and there's white, a light, and you will see also a dark red, okay? And this is what makes it dimensional, right? So, we are looking at the picture now. Let's look at the details of the picture. So, if you look at the picture where the light hills hits the scarlet ibis bloom. Firstly, we can see the dimension here. We can see it has it has body where the light falls on it. So there's a white line here. There's a white line here. It's a bit dark there. So that's the first thing we are going to do. Now, some of you might have a palette like this. Yes, it's quite dirty. I would put my color here and then I will mix here. All right. Some of you might have a palette like this. It's the same thing color mix and some of you may not have that you might just have a styrotex or a cover fine but i'm going to start with this okay so the first thing we are looking at is the bill it is it has some white spots it has we are looking at where the light falls on it which is here okay so the size paintbrush that we are going to use is a small paintbrush Picking you, okay? Picking you. So I am going to open my white blanco. I am just going to touch it. Remember, when we paint, we don't make the paint touch all here. We just touch the bristles. And remember, we hold it like a pen pencil. You pinch, let it fall like this. You touch, okay? I'm going to put it on my palette here, like that. Now we're going to paint. So let me just adjust this to me. Right. I wonder. Okay. So looking at my picture, 
I am seeing that I need to have a little bit of white here. Touch, touch, touch. White comes up here. Touch, touch, touch. White comes here. All the way here, I touch it. Just touch it like that. Okay? I touch it. So now we are getting into details. Okay? Let me bring it nearer for you to see. Right? So I just touched it. If we look at the picture, where else are we seeing this white touches? We've seen a little bit of white here, a little bit of white here, a little bit of white here, a little bit of white here. We've seen it on the legs here and on the legs here. So again, I'm going to touch it, right? And I'm going to touch where the white is. We saw some white. We're just touching it lightly. Not drop, light. We're just touching it. Touching it here. This is where the light is falling on it. And it's actually the bird. Is it really white? No. It's scarlet. It's rojo. But this is where the light touch. If you look at my face too, you can see where the light is touching me. If I move in certain angles, you will see where the light is touching. So now that's what we're working on, where the light is touching. Right? So we have the light here too. Right? We're touching it. We're touching it here. We have light come in here too. We're just touching it gently. We're just touching it. We have on the feet here. We're touching it gently. We're just touching it like that. Okay, then I put my brush into the water. Let me bring it for you to see. Look carefully. Let me see if you all are seeing it. Yes, you can. All right, that, those are the areas. Now, we have, look again at the picture. We have some dark areas here, right? It looks black, but it's not black. That is where the shadow is. We have some dark areas here. We have some dark areas here, dark area here. We have some dark area, but the bird is scarlet. But because of how the light is falling on it, it looks a bit dark. So we are going to take out our rojo and our blanco. And again, we're going to put, take out the red, rojo, rest it down on our palettes, okay? Wash out the brush, right? Wash it out because we don't want to mix the, the colors and the paints. I'm going to touch some black now, right? Just touch. So here's how you use your palette. So this is where my black is, and we want a little red black. So separately here now, I'm going to touch my red, just mix it. I want to get a little red black. Touch my red, mix it. There it goes. I have my red black. Okay? It's not too black. It's just red black. Because if you look carefully, look, let's look back at the scarlet ibis here. It's a darker shade of red. All right? So it's just a touch of black. Here's yeah, a bit darker. We have a touch of it here too. We have a touch of it here. So now we're going back here. So right here, first there's a bit of it. Again, we are touching. We are just touching it. We're just touching it right here. Right around here. Then you have under the neck here, right? It's very dark underneath here, a little bit here. We have a little bit coming down here, right under the neck here right then we have by the foot here first foot here right mm -hmm. then we have this leg with lots of it because there's a lot of shadow then we have by this wing here going here like this like that and then we have here all right so what we did here girls we put in a little bit of tones but here we can see some brilliant red happening here, right? And after the paint has dried, you would have seen that your paints had to look a little lighter. We could come back again now, only going into rojo, right? And the technique we're using is dabbing. What do you call it? Dabbing. So look at dabbing. So I am seeing a lot of red. It's darker around his eye, right? There's a darker red here around his neck. There's a darker red here. I am dabbing it here. Let me dip again, right? There's a darker bit here. 
I'm dipping down here. There's a darker bit here. I'm dipping down here. There's a darker bit here. Okay? Let me put that for you to see now. Right? So what we did is we put tones onto it. It gave our, our scarlet iris some dimension. This is what it, it did. You seen how the light falling on, on my scarlet ibis? It gave it dimension. So it's not flat. It has body. It has length. It has width. It has height. Okay? It is not flat. And the light is clearly falling. This, this color is red. But you're seeing the white light coming on this. Okay? Now, let's have some fun now. Let's create the background. Okay? So the background up here, this is a wash. A wash means more water and less paint. So I already have my water here, right? And my background is green. It's a large area, so I'm going to find my largest paint brush. Let me see. So this is my largest paint brush that I can find, right? And my background is green, a kind of green and a little bit of yellow. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up my verde, dip into the quarter, take some green, and I'm going to put it here on my palette. And also, I am going to dip into my yellow, amarillo. All right? Wash it out. Dip it into the yellow. So my palette has the two colors. So the first color, now the most important, remember a wash, more water, less pain. So I make sure I want green first, dip it in, and the direction I'm going to paint is left to right. A la derecha, a la ikizara. You see how watery it looks? Because it is more water, less paint. I hope I didn't remind you all to put on your aprons. You need to have on your aprons. Okay? So, I'm going to my left and right. Dip into my water. I'm dip going across like this. Left and right. Left and right. Okay? Left and right. I'm seeing that some of it looks yellowy. So now I can add my yellow. Go near, go near and pull across. Add my water. Again, I pull it across, pull it across. Ooh, don't let it fall. Water, 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 right? Because it's a wash. It's a faded background. When you wash your, your, your art, when we say you're doing a wash, it's because you want to just make the background look faded, okay? And the, um, the scarlet ibis is, in this, is, is sitting in the mango forest, and this is its faded background, okay? So we're going down up to here. We're coming up to here. We're stopping about here, so because we're going to have fun with the leaves, right? So the background sort of stops around halfway here, about here. Bye, babes. That's my daughter who just came from class. All right, so I'm going back down. I'm washing. Take my time. Go across like this. It's my wash. Right? Oops, I got a little bit of the red in it. You have to be careful. One of the things you have to do with paintings too, sometimes you have to leave it to dry because when you come and work on it, it might you might be picking up the color again on it. All right? So here is my wash. Okay? I have my wash. But the hummingbird, we can see leaves, right? So again, we're going to do a different technique. We're going to call this technique dabbing. And the leaves are different shades of green and yellow. Again, I put more using the same paintbrush, but we're going to have a little fun. I am just going to drop it in like this. We're going to have some fun, right? I'm just going to take my thing, 
my bean brush make the shape of the leaves we're not going into too much detail all right the scarlet ibis is in it so much so we can't even see where his feet we, we can't even see his toes all right but we have all different shapes of leaves so my first shade i'm going to go with with my normal green leaves right there are leaves here I'm taking my paintbrush and trying to make it like an oval pattern because the basic shape of a leaf is oval, okay? And I'm filling that white space. I don't want to see that white space, all right? Then I want some leaves are also yellow. I can go in now and I'm filling it with yellow, right? That's okay if you still have paint on your paintbrush, that's okay. And you fill in those spaces that's okay you fill in your spaces like that fill it in you fill it in like that fill it in like that okay and some of the leaves i want to get it in a darker shade of green but i don't have another shade so you know what you could do i could use azul just a touch of blue right again i just mix it with my green and i am going to get a darker shade of blue of green and i mix it in see i got a darker shade i don't want to see those white spaces so i'm going to put it in there right i'm just filling in the spaces so my subject, the scarlet ibis is standing out and he's not standing in the air. He's standing in the mangrove, right? He's probably getting ready to nest, right? So I'm just putting in the leaves because I can't even see his toes, right? I'm putting in the leaves, right? I don't want to touch him too much, but I'm going in the spaces. I want to get into the spaces there. I don't really want to see too much white because from our picture, there's not white, it is somewhere. Okay, so now I'm filling in my spaces now. I just touch a little bit of black now, a little bit, remember, from what we had from before, and I'm putting water because I want it to be washy, right? And we don't want to make it look, we want to make, we want to fill up those white spaces, okay? Because we don't want it to be that the hummingbird is just in midair, it's somewhere. It's in the, car the scarlet ibis is in the Karani swamp, right? We don't want to make it just be there, right? We want to put it, we want to give it a setting. We want to give it a place, all right? And possibly he is now going to go to sleep. And this is probably where he builds his nest because the scarlet ibis, you know, it nests in the mangrove tree and the mangrove tree is in the Karani swamp, okay? So this is where our scarlet ibis is. So we created our background, we created our leaves, we got rid of all the white spaces. All right, now we are finished. Our painting is done, okay? So let's just go over it again. First, when we first did it last week, our painting was one dimensional. So we need to make it three dimensional you will learn about different three-dimensional shapes. I'm sure Miss started talking to you about three-dimensional shapes, all right? Then we added tones of colors onto it, where the light fell on it, the white, right? We started with white, and then we did black, dark, dark red by touching it with black, right? And then we wanted to create the background. So the background was a wash because we want the subject, which is the scarlet ibis, to be the only thing. We don't want anything else that is distracting. So we did a wash. A wash goes, remember, it is more water, less paint. All right? And we wash our background like this. We wash. And the leaves, the, the scarlet ibis, half of it was our sky the other half was the leaves so we start working on our leaves we started with green yellow and then we tone it with some of the black and some of the dark blue to get the different shades of leaves okay girls 
All right. And remember, I can do all things. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. And I love God. And God loves me. Therefore, I can love everybody. And I can love everybody because God loves me. All right, girls, you can do it. I look forward to seeing your work. Don't forget, girls, when you're finished, clean up. All right? Don't forget to safe practices. Wash your hands. Put on your mask. When going out in public. Okay? Adios.